Salute. Welcome to this video lesson on Fabulae Sirae um, 27. goes along with chapter 27 of Lingua Latina Perse Illustrata. And the story that we're reading about here is entitled La Tona, section 2. La Tona Dea Fuit. La Tona, or Lido, was a goddess. So La Tona is the Roman name for the Greek goddess Leto. <laughs> Um, and she, by the way, of course, as we're going to find out in this story, is the mother of Apollo and Artemis. Artemis has the Roman name Diana, or Diana. Okay. Latona was a goddess. Quam Juno deorum regina non amabat, whom Juno, the queen of the gods, did not love. Now, you might take a guess here at why she didn't love her, and if you guessed that it was because Zeus had an affair with her, you'd be right on track. Um, Zeus had lots of affairs with lots of goddesses and mortal women, and poor Leto is one of them. And Juno, or Hera, his wife, is often taking out her anger on these women. Even though it's really Ju Jupiter or Zeus's fault, um, she once tried to revolt against him, but she ended up hanging from her ankles from the heavens, and she never really tried after that. So, though she does things that are kind of annoying to him behind the scenes, she doesn't openly revolt against Zeus. Itaque, and so, de Olumpo expulsam interum misit. She sent misit, her, meaning Leto, expelled expulsam from Olympus de Olympo down onto the earth in Teram ubi ipsa myrins where she herself grieving and here we're talking of Leto per campos silvasque erabat was wandering through fields and forests ad oram maritimam lotona postremo advenit Latona at last arrived at the sea coast, the seashore. Ubi seek Neptunum Rawit, where she prayed to Neptune thus, or in this way. O Neptune, Orote, O Neptune, I beg you, I pray you, ut me in insulam pedas, that you bring me to an island, in medio mari sitam, situated in the middle of the sea. Optoenim ut ibi eratam junonim tandem effugere possim. For enim, I, um, opto is sort of like wish or choose, that I be able, ut possim, there, ibi, to escape effugere, the angry Juno, or angry Juno, eratam junonim, at last, tandem. So tandem and postremo, those are both finally or at last synonyms for Danaque and Daemum as well. All right, let's see how Neptune replies to Leto's request. Neptunus eius precibus per motos, Neptune, very moved by her prayers, parvam insulam ex oceani fundo extulit. Uh, raised up, extulit, a small island from the bottom of the ocean. Tum del pinum ex alto mari ad latonem misit. Then he sent a dolphin from the deep sea or high sea to Latona. Qui eam indorso suos edentem a litere maris usque ad parvae ilius insulae oram vexit. Who, qui, carried her, vexit eam, sitting on its back, sedentum in dorso suo, from the shore of the sea, from the, the beach of the sea, a litere maris, all the way to, usque ad, the beach or the shore, or am, of that small island, par y ilius insulae. Ibi vero, but there, del pinus eam exposuit, the dolphin uh, set her out, or set her down, we might say. Quae ob homili hit litere in alta saxa ascendit. Uh, she who ascended, or climbed up, onto the high rocks in alta saxa from the lowly shore. 
of mealy litere. Unde prospiciens, um, looking forth from where, meaning from the high rocks, totum mare circa insulam spectavit. She looked at the whole sea around the island. <clears throat> and we can see here in the picture, Latona et agricolae in magnas ranas conversi. Latona and farmers having been changed into big frogs. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Farmers turning into frogs? Yeah, myth has something to do with that. Okay. Locus erat amoinissimus. The place was very charming, very pleasant. Amoinus is the Latin adjective from which we get amenities and amenable. Uh, amenities are, of course, the nice things that you might get at a stay at a hotel or a resort. <clears throat> so the place was most charming, most pleasant. Insula autem non fix estabat. However, the island did not stay fixed. It did not stand there fixed. Said Tom Quam Nawis, but just as a ship, modo hook, modo iluk, fluctibus yaktabatur. Now was tossed here, now was tossed there by the waves. La tono vero in insula, quae moebatur, we were no lebat. But Latona did not want to live on an island which was moved, which was being moved. Jupiter igitur, Jupiter therefore, posquam hoc anamadvertit, after he noticed this, de alto Olimpo descendit, descended from high Olympus, atque catenes ferreis insulam ad maris fundum winksit. He bound the island, insulam winksit, to the bottom of the sea, ad fundum maris, with iron chains, catenes ferreis. Okay. Lotona ergo, Lotona therefore, in ea insula habitavit, lived on that island. Said quod solerat, but because she was alone, Jupiter filium et filiam et idedit. Jupiter gave her a son and a daughter. Now, this is a euphemism if ever I saw one. Of course, this means he had an affair with her, and the offspring of that affair were a son and daughter, and this is Apollo and Artemis. Ita nati sunt Apollo et Diana. So were born Apollo and Diana. Latonae liberi, the children of Leto. Quos ipsa valde amabat, whom she loved very much. Neque yam ab insula discedere volebat, nor now did she want to depart from the island. At inde quoque necesse fuit fugere, but also it was necessary to flee from there. Nam Juno eam persequebatur, for Juno was pursuing her, or persecuting her. So she was still after Leto. I guess she found out about Zeus visiting her to have um, Apollo and Artemis. Duos igitur infantes, qui non dum ambulare poterant, in sino suo portans, per verias teras erabat et valde fesa erat. Therefore, igitur, carrying the two babies, portans duos infantes, who were not yet able to walk, qui non dum ambulare poterant, in her, uh, and then how do we want to translate sinus? Um, in her, we could say in her lap, or we could say in her bosom, or something like that. And you can see in the margin the picture of the sinus uh, as a fold of her garment. That's possible, a sort of pouch that she made with her paula, uh, paula being a kind of mantle thing that you women would wrap around. Um, the thing about sinus is it means a curve or curved thing. Um, so it could be her lap or it could be, again, a pouch made from her, her garment here. She wandered through the various lands, Erabat Perwarius Terras, and she was very tired at Walde Fesaerat. Quam quam vero sitiebat et esuriebat. 
Yet, although she was thirsty and was hungry, neque aquam in venire potarat, neither was she able to find water, neque quisquam kibum ei largire volebat, nor did anyone want to um, bestow food upon her or to give her food generously. Omnes enim unorim iratam metuebant, for everybody feared angry Juno. Juno is known for getting really angry. She's not good at keeping her temper. Olim dum ambulat, once while she was walking, subito parvum lacum haud procol a via vidit. Suddenly she saw a small lake, not at all far from the road. Ad quim laetissima statim cucurit to which she, very happy, immediately ran. Agriculae vero, qui frumentum in campis metebant, but the farmers who were reaping metebant, that means um, cutting off the grain, who were reaping the grain in the fields, posquam eam conspexerunt ad lacum corintim, after they caught sight of her running to the lake, abi clamaverunt, shouted, go away, noli aquae apropinquare, don't approach the water. Now, of course, this is because they're afraid of what Juno or Hera is going to do to them if they let her take a drink. Nisi statim discades, unless you shall immediately go away or depart, curabimus ne aquam ilam bibere posis, we will take care that you not be able to drink that water. Quibus autim clamantibus, um, to whom shouting, however, uh, Latona non paruit. Latona did not show obedience. So paruit to obey, um, here in the perfect tense, did not obey, and it takes a dative of the person that you obey, or in this case, do not obey. And thus the quibus clamantibus is dative plural. So one more time, that is, however, Latona did not obey whom shouting, or these people, we might say, shouting. Of course, that's referring to the, the, the farmers here. Et lacum patins, and seeking out the lake, she says, inquit, Cur me prohibitis aquis? Why are you preventing or prohibiting me from the waters? Omnes libere aquis utuntur. All people use waters freely. That is to say, we all have a right to drink water, surely. Natura nemini dedit solim, nec aera, nec aquam. Nature gave the sun to no one, nor the air, nor the water. Dona sunt omnibus communia. They are common gifts to all. Orans tamen awobis, peto ut me aquam harire senatis. Nevertheless, um, praying or begging, I seek from you, peto awobis, that you allow me, ut sinatis me, to drink or drain the water, aquam harire, nolo anim in laku lavare membra, for I do not want to wash my limbs in the lake, tantum bibindi cupidasum, I am only desirous of drinking. Quoniam os es valde sicum, since my mouth is very dry, et weeks loqui possum, and I can scarcely speak. Oro igitur vos, therefore I ask you all, or beg you all, ut aqua mihi ad vivindum necessariam detis, that you give ut detis me water, mihi aquam, necessary for living. Nekesariam, notice that agrees with aquam, describing it, and then you get the gerund, gerund phrase, ad windum for living. Non he quoque infantes vos movent, don't these babies move you also? Qui ex meo sinu ad vos brachia tendunt, who are stretching out their arms to you from my bosom or from my lap, or again, whatever we want to call the sinus here, it could be the fold in her garment. It looks like she's kind of holding them in her lap here in this picture. 
then again, there are several ways to translate sinus. There's not one option. Agricolae vero ili, but those farmers, qui ab aqua eam prohibere volebant, who wanted to prohibit her from the water, his verbis nullo modo motisunt, were moved in no way by these words. Sed falcabus suis in campo relictis, but with their sickles left behind in the field, ad lacum ipsi quoque cucurerunt, they themselves also ran to the lake, that is where Latona was, atque aquam pedibus manabusque turbare coiperunt, and they began to disturb the water, turbare aquam, with their feet, pedibus, and with their hands, manabusque. Basically, they're making the water muddy so she can't drink it. Tunc Latona, then Leto, quae aquam sordidum yam bibere non potarat, who now was not able to drink the dirty water, Deus deasque his verbis oravit, prayed to the gods and goddesses with these words, O Dei boni, si soror vestra sum, O good gods, if I am your sister, Ac me adhuc amatis, and you still love me. Curate ut hi improbi in Grecolae. Take care that these wicked farmers, qui me ab aqua prohibeunt, severe puniantur. These wicked farmers who have prohibited me from the water, be severely punished. Severe puniantur. And notice that's a present subjunctive there. So this is uh, it's what we call an indirect command. Take care that this happened. You could also call it um, a substantive clause of result or a noun clause of result. Depends on whether you view this as um, seeing to it that it happens or as sort of a command that this thing be done. Okay, quibus verbis auditis, with which words having been heard, that's an ablative phrase there. Alditis is a perfect passive participle. With which words having been heard, Jupiter, Jupiter, Deorum Omnium Rex, the king of all the gods, Agricolas illos pravos in magnas ranas convertit, changed or turned those bad farmers, illos pravos agricolas, into big frogs in Magnas Ranas. So basically he turned them into bullfrogs. Hunk ob kausam, on account of that or this reason, etiam nunc ranae, even now frogs, simper apud aquam, out in aqua ipsa we won't, always live uh, near water or in the water itself. Okay. So this is an etiology explaining the origin of frogs and why they live in the places they do. And apparently it's because of all these croaking farmers trying to say she couldn't drink the water. All right. Well, I hope you learned a few things about the myth here, um, about Latin grammar.